Keep those jazz hands out just for a second. If you're feeling good today, and I know you are in essentials, if you're feeling good, give me two claps. Nice, that was good. Do it again, two claps. Say success, give me one clap. Success, one clap. Success, half a clap. Seriously. So, I will never, I grew up in Durham here. Never forget the day I was 15 years old. My mom and I were watching the prices right together like we always did in the summer. Had lunch. I beat my mom yet again on the showcase showdown. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, Mom, I'm going to shake hands with Bob Barker one day. I don't know how. But I just set a goal. And it was more than a goal, though. It was a vision. And then my mom responded like, um, that's your goal in life? <laughs> and then she reminded me yet again I was switched at birth. But I had this fascination with The Price is Right that I can't explain. It picked me. Our passions in life, we don't choose. They choose us. They choose us. And I had a lot of people that laughed at me with this vision that I had for wanting to meet Bob Barker and shake his hand on national TV. So growing up, my mom and I, we'd go to the grocery store. She'd be shopping for groceries. I'd be studying grocery prices. You know, a teenager should not know the price of Metamucil and Dexatrim. All right? All right? $6.99, but still, I mean, I should not know that. <laughs> what I really needed was some new essentials, okay? Yeah. So, I go to college. I meet with my academic advisor to schedule my courses my first year. She tries to get me into an uh, 11 a.m. class. That's when the price is right is. Uh. I told her I had a commitment. <laughs> she says, of what? You're a freshman. I said, well, that's what I watched, the price is right. Like thinking, doesn't everybody do that? And then she responded that I would not be there very long. <laughs> and of course, I believed it at that point. But she gets me into a 9 o'clock English class. Thank you. And the first assignment that we had in that English class was to write a descriptive essay on anything that we wanted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the price is right. She said three pages. I did it in five. <laughs> Why the show was so great. As the bright, bright spotlight shines across the state, right? A week later, I get the paper back. A week later, I get the paper back. And I open up the paper, and it reads, Kevin, see me after class. <laughs> oh! You know, not a smart kid, right? I go see her after class. Dr. Adams holds up my paper up in front of my face and says, Kevin, this is one of the best papers I've ever read with this class assignment. But you're obsessed with this show. <laughs> And you need help. She then gave me the number for the counseling center. And I went. So, but I continue to watch The Price is Right every single day, and I loved it every single day. I look forward to it every single day. I never had a college course at UNC Wilmington at 11 a.m. What? And now it's so easy because you got TiVo, right? I mean, back in the day, I had to actually... You know, if I had to record it, I'd put a VHS in and hit, you know. So, but I never knew how. That's the, probably the most important piece of this entire story. I had a vision, but I didn't know how. And I think many times in life, we allow the how to get in the way. And what we've really done is we've allowed ourselves to get in our own way, and we wonder why we don't achieve the results we want sometimes. The greatest inventions that started all with what? A thought, an idea. They didn't know how, but they followed a vision for something. They, in fact, worked a little backward. They said, here's the vision. And by the way, most people don't even have that. They think they do. 80% of any goal attainment is simply knowing what the goal is. It's kind of like success. You kind of just have to show up, right? But then you also have to, hey, just understand, I'm not going to know exactly how everything is going to work. Because guess what? Life's going to happen along the way too, right? You're going to be forced in pushed in new ways you didn't explore. And when you're pursuing your passion and a vision, doors will open that you don't see. If you would have told me 15 years ago with a marine biology degree, I'd be a motivational speaker and author of books when I didn't even think I could write, I'd be like, you're cray. <laughs> Z. <laughs> Hashtag that, right? So here I am. Why? I don't. But Price is Right helped me understand I just wanted to follow this vision. So I go to a leadership conference, very similar to this, summer before my senior year, and I meet this guy named Chris at the registration line. Chris and I instantly connected. It was like 
the bromance you always wanted, right? <laughs> Chris and I go to this session together, and in the session, we did an icebreaker. And the icebreaker was to stand on a chair and then say something unique about yourself that nobody else would know unless you told them. Can I borrow your chair? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Chris jumps on his chair, says, What's up, guys? I'm Chris. I'm from the University of California in San Diego. And most people would not know that I was just on The Price is Right and I got a gazebo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, no, you didn't, right? <laughs> and for the next three days of this leadership conference, all I could do was talk to Chris about <laughs> how'd you get on the show? <laughs> Taxes, prizes. All right, how did Bob really look? <laughs> you know, and the models, but Chris was able to explain to me the how. Anybody ever wondered how do you get selected to be a contestant? You think it's random? Life always has a strategy. Life always has a strategy. If you ever find yourself like hamster in a wheel, spinning, 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 wondering how come I'm, I'm active today, but am I productive? Am I productive, right? I feel that way sometimes. So there's a strategy on how to get selected. I didn't know that. Chris shared it with me. While you're simply waiting in line, producers and directors are talking to you. They know exactly who they're going to pick prior to the show starting. And you have to know that. So you go there in a group. Go there wearing the same shirts. Have your group plug you. Things like that. Chris went on his 21st birthday. 30 of his fraternity guys all wearing the same shirt, plugging him. And Chris just really kind of looked a little different. And he had a great personality, which is what they want on stage. So knowing all this, I said, Chris, Awesome, but I'm from North Carolina. <laughs> will you get that group together for me and we'll do the same thing out in LA? He goes, done. Wow. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, timing wasn't on our side because I went back and in between my job starting and that moment, there was only one show taping date that was available. Of all the show taping dates, only one still had tickets remaining, and that was the exact same date as my college graduation. So I had a choice. <laughs> college graduation, Bob Barker. <laughs> the only difficulty with the choice was calling my mom and my dad to tell them I was not going to my college graduation. So they were not very happy. Mom understood. Uh, she convinced my dad. But we hit the road. My best friend and I hit the road. And by the time we got to Tennessee, we already had two separate flat car tires, and the map we brought was only a state map from North Carolina. <laughs> but we tracked onward as if we were the Griswolds going out to National Lampoon's vacation. That should have been an omen. 3,000 miles later, we hang out with Chris for two days, pull up 3551 Beverly Boulevard. All right, picture it with me. We're driving up in the morning of the show taping, 10 cars behind us. I'm on cloud nine, 3550 on Beverly Boulevard. And then we see the sign that says, show canceled, Bob sick. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I fell to the ground and cried. And then we got escorted off property. <laughs> Have you ever pursued something in your life that you didn't get what you wanted, right? I mean, think about it. Is there something that you put a lot of sacrifice, a lot of investment into, and then all of a sudden it just didn't work out? You know, the simple truth, life is so much about how we react versus what actually happens to us. What do I know? But I know that. <laughs> so we hit the road back home the next day. I was devastated. 3,000 miles for nothing. We stop at a Chinese restaurant for buffet. I pay for it, and I open up my fortune cookie, and it says, how bad do you want it? Wow. wow. <laughs> Next day, we get home. I call my new job. I say, I'm going to be about a week late. <laughs> Flew back out. Chris picked me up at 11 p.m., we waited in line to 9 a.m., did the same thing over. The morning of the show taping, parking lots open. And in fact, there's actually people in front of us. Only two, but still. <laughs> Check this out.
Now, I don't have time to show you the video, but it is on YouTube. It is on YouTube. Just type up Kevin Snyder and Weird Guy, and you'll find me. <laughs> but here you can see the outcome. And what I want to leave you with, in Essentials, what I want to leave you with is this thought. This wasn't just a goal achieved. When I saw this headline in the paper, it hit me. I was 22 years old. Kind of been through a little bit. But I lived a dream. And yeah, it took me two attempts, but I would have kept going out. I would have kept going out. I saw this headline, Snyder Lives Dream, and I thought, you're damn right. In order to live a dream, you have to have one. Simple as that. And right now, if your goals and your dreams, if you already know exactly how they're going to manifest, they're not big enough. Your dreams literally should scare you a little bit. Your dreams literally, somebody should look at you and say, you're crazy. And you say, I know. It's as simple as that. Then, of course, the action step is very important. The strategy is very important. But you've got great coaches around here. You've got people that can support you. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. If you know exactly how you're going to achieve it, it's not big enough. Okay? So this was my dream at 15. I'm still working on another dream. Can I show it to you? Sure. I'm, wor I'm working on one more right now. All right. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on that one. But overall, you got to have a vision for what you want in life. Don't let the how get in the way. Because if you let the how get in the way, you'll let yourself get in your own way. Now, the how is important, but you have to follow the dream, the vision, and know that if you work backwards, and sometimes you work, the, you, it, it's very interlocked. But if you don't know exactly how you're going to do something, that's fine. But follow that dream and that vision. So, would love to keep in touch. Um, you can connect with my e-newsletter. You can even text me, Kevin C. Snyder, 22828. Uh, shoot me an email, Kevin C. Snyder. Would love to keep in touch. I want to hear some of your visions. I want to hear some of your visions. I want to hear how I can support it. I write back to every email. Uh, my cell phone's on my website. Let me know. Any questions, comments, jokes? Did you win? Did I win? Yes. Yes, I did win. What did you win? I won $5,000. Wow. I played Punch a Bunch. And I won all the crappy prizes that came along with it. <laughs> and a diamond bracelet to get on stage. Were you on the showcase? I did not get on the, I did not get on the showcase. I spun the wheel. I got 85 cents. And the girl before me bid a dollar, or spun a dollar. So you won 5000 How much did it cost you to get there twice? <laughs> 5000 bucks. I probably kept $4,200 out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Plus taxes. Yeah. Thank you for all the leadership questions. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Give yourselves two claps. Two claps. Half clap. Oh. <laughs>